In college, I had this calculus professor whom at the end of every lesson would ask, does anyone have any questions? And maybe one or two people would raise their hand. Then he would ask, does anyone have any dumb questions? And like way more people would have their hands up. Probably because initially they were scared of asking something that seemed obvious or something that the professor had already gone over. But by the professor acknowledging that it was a dumb question, it kind of took that fear away. Now, for me personally, I get a lot of questions, whether it be in comments, Instagram DMs, email, whatever. And I get asked a lot of the same questions repeatedly. And a lot of these are like life changing decisions. And the problem with that is I really don't have enough information about you or your situation to really make a good decision for you. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the most common questions I get asked. And if you've asked me one of these questions, don't feel bad. There's a difference between a dumb question and a bad question. Most of these are good questions. So without really knowing you, um, I would take any of my answers with a grain of salt. The first question is, should I quit my job and try to become a software developer? So there are a lot of factors involved here. One, uh, do you have any dependents? Uh, if you do, it's uh, probably not a good idea to quit your job. Um, probably not a very responsible decision either. Do you have a spouse and are they okay with your decision? The older you get, the more incumbent you become and the harder it is to make a drastic change. And becoming a software developer, it's not like something you can change overnight. It takes a lot of time to become proficient enough to work as a developer. Another thing I have to ask is what's your work ethic? Like for me, my goal was to become the best software developer out there. I knew what wasn't actually going to happen. Um, I would have to probably start a lot earlier, but just having that mindset, um, you know, pushed me and kept me motivated. So are you someone that just saw the salaries and were like, oh, cool, I can make a six figure job just sitting in front of my computer all day? Or, or are you actually someone that's going to be able to put in that work? And trust me, it's, it's a lot of work. And I think a lot of people that ask this are looking for a justification from me. Like they want to do it, but they need someone like me, like someone who's actually already done it to tell them that they should. But no matter what I say, the risk isn't going to change for you. And the questions I mentioned earlier are still going to be there. The next question I get a lot is, hey, Sam, should I get a degree? Should I go do a developer boot camp? Should I go the self-taught route? Of course, getting a degree would probably be the best out of the three. But again, it depends. Um, Boot camps are definitely an effective way to get a job. However, they're very expensive. I know any boot camp out there right now is probably like 15 to 20K, which is more than I paid for for my graduate degree. The, the tech that you learn in a boot camp can become obsolete. I remember in like 2015, I went to this hackathon hosted by Dev Boot Camp. I don't even think they're around anymore, but the technology they taught was Ruby, which even back then, but more so now, is kind of a niche language. So if the only skill you know becomes obsolete, you become obsolete as a developer. The goal of a bootcamp is to immediately get a job after and that job will kind of keep you relevant with the current tech. But the good thing about having a degree is I could take like a year off, I could come back and that degree would still hold weight. And then you have the self-taught route, which is the cheapest, but probably the hardest route to get something out of. So again, depends on your situation. Like how old are you? Uh, how much money are you willing to spend on a bootcamp? Uh, I don't know, there are a lot of factors involved. The next question I get asked is, should I buy this certain course? I don't know. First of all, are you even gonna use it? You'd be amazed at how many people buy all these online courses and they don't make it past like the second video. Second of all, I've hardly bought any online courses, so I'm not really an expert on the subject and I can't um, recommend something I haven't used. And personally, I use YouTube for learning most of this stuff anyways. And again, depends on your financial situation. If you're a broke college student, you probably don't have a hundred bucks to spend on, uh, on a course. For example, last year I made a video about Algo Expert and I haven't watched the video in a while, but I think I said something like it's a good product, but it's probably not worth the money. What I really should have done is left it up to the viewer. Like is the value that you're getting worth the monetary value that you're paying? If it is, go for it. If not, find something else. The next question I get asked a lot is, can I pay you to either help me fix a programming bug or help me build out this Instagram bot? And I'm honored that you would consider me, but the, the thing is for me, it's not really a money thing. It's, it's a time thing. Like how do I even pick whom to help? It's either I pick everyone, which is not really feasible, or I don't help anyone. And oftentimes I'll get asked about like a technology that I don't really know about, so I couldn't help anyways or I think someone just sent me like an error message and I'm like, 
I don't even know what I'm looking at. For a lot of these questions, you have to sit down, dig through the code, debug. And, and like I said, right now, the biggest thing holding me back from doing a lot of things I want to do is time, um, like upload more content. But that's why resources like Stack Overflow exist. Um, or shameless plug here, there's the Keep On Coding Discord server where we have language specific channels. So if you do have a question, definitely hop on there and uh, maybe one of the members might be able to help you out. All right, before we get into the last one, I have a couple of honorable mentions I wanted to go over. The first is, am I too old to start coding? And I've gotten this question asked from people anywhere from 16 to 60. And usually I just say, no, it's not too late. Maybe if you're like 60 and you're trying to change careers, it might be. But yeah, usually usually it's not too late. And the next one is, how do I stay motivated to code? How do you stay motivated to do anything in school or life? Um, I, I do have a video where I do talk about, for me, you kind of lose your motivation, but building habits is more important. But if you're still having trouble finding motivation, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not the right thing for you. So finally, the last question I get asked is, what field of software development should I get into? So there are like so many things, right? There's the DevOps, full stack development, mobile development, like so many things, right? And it's kind of a mix of two things. One is, what do you like? And the other thing is, what does your job or the project you're working on require? And uh, yeah, what you like and what your job requires don't often go together. So, you know, figuring out what you like might take a while. For me, I got pretty lucky. Um, I figured it out as soon as I did my internship, I realized that I wanted to go into full stack development. But even now, like the technology and the stuff that I'm working on now are a lot different than what I thought I would be working on upon graduation. So again, just try different things out. I, I have a coworker who they did software development for a while and they thought that's what they wanted to do. And then they started doing a lot of like development ops and they realized like that was actually their true passion. So it does take a lot of time, but eventually you'll figure out what you like. All right, so there you have it. Uh, again, uh, just because something is a dumb question doesn't mean it's not a good question. And I don't want you guys to like feel shy now to ask me any of these questions. Honestly, I don't mind. So take my answers with a grain of salt. And at the end of the day, you know yourself and your situation best. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like the video if you didn't. And as always, keep on coding.